is the question I need help with here. 1.21. Without solving for x, show that the solution lies in the interval 2 to 4. We're going to do that question. Let's start by doing 1.1.1. So 1.1.1, we are solving for x. We have 2x multiplied by 3x plus 4 being equals to 0. We have two numbers multiplying each other, right? And then the answer is 0. So 1 between the two numbers need to be equals to 0 itself. That is the only way that is possible. So we have 2x is equals to 0 or 3x plus 4 is equals to 0. It should be easy to see that x is equals to 0 or x is equals to minus 4 over 3. There we go. Other people will multiply out here at this step, which is completely unnecessary. They multiply out and they take a common factor. Why would you do that? Just solve the equation from the get-go. That is 1.1.1. Take a look at 1.1.2. We're supposed to solve 2x squared minus 4x is equal to minus 1. Correct to two decimal places. We know that we are supposed to use the quadratic formula as soon as we see correct to two decimal places. I'm quite convinced that we all know how to do that by now. So let's jump straight to 1.1.3. In 1.1.3, we have an inequality. We have x minus 2 everything squared being greater or equals to 1. Let's expand x minus 1 everything to the power 2. We get x squared minus 4x plus 4 greater or equals to 1. And our critical values x squared minus 4x plus 3 is equals to 0. In factorizing this, we're going to get x minus 3 multiplied by x minus 1. This is equals to 0. When you multiply out, you go back to x squared minus 4x plus 3. So x is equals to 3 or x is equals to 1. Those are our critical values. As soon as we get to this point, we have two possible sets of solutions. Let me show you what I'm talking about. It's either x, this is the first possible solution. It's either x lies between 1 or we have or equals to, right? It's either x lies between 1 and 3 right or x is less than 1 or x is greater than 3 one between these is the correct answer we just need to perform a test and see which one it is but let's take a look at this here we're seeing that x lies between 1 and 3 which whole number lies between 1 and 3 2 lies between 1 and 3 so let's substitute 2 in our equation and see if our equation is going to be satisfied. If our equation is satisfied, then we're going to know that that first option is our answer. Okay, let's take a look. We're going to have 2 minus 2 squared being greater or equal to 1. Obviously, this is 0. Is 0 greater or equal to 1? No, it is not. So, that first option is not correct. Without even testing the second option, we already know that it is the correct answer. But let's just go ahead and test it out uh, for the sake of clarity. Well, we're saying that x is less than 1 or x is greater than 3. Let's take a number less than 1. A number less than 1 is 0. So take a look at this. We're going to have 0 minus 2 squared being greater or equal to 1. Obviously, 4 is greater or equal to 1. Our equation is satisfied. Our inequality, I mean. And then now let's take a number greater than 3. Let's take 4. If we take 4, we get 4 minus 2 squared being greater or equal to 1. Obviously, this is going to be 4 greater or equal to 1. Again, our equation, our inequality is satisfied. So we know that x is less than 1 or x is greater or equal to 3. And there we go. We have our answer to 1.1.3. And now comes the equation I want you guys to help me with. Take a look at 1.2. 1.2 says we're given an equation square root of x minus 2 is equal to 4 minus x. And the equation is saying without solving for x, show that the solution lies in the interval 2 to 4. Right. Without solving the equation. Let's show that. 
Okay, so let's take a look at this interval, 2 to 4. Well, the whole numbers we have is 2, 3, and 4. So let's test these three whole numbers, 2, 3, and 4, and see if that equation is satisfied, starting with 4. Uh, well, let's start with 2. x is equal to 2. When we have x being equal to 2, we're going to have square root of 0. So, uh, well, square root of 2 minus 2. So, square root of 0, that gives us 0. So, we have 0 being equal to 4. We know this not to be correct, right? And now let's test x is equal to 3. Right, yes, x is equal to 3. Let's see. So, we're going to have 3 minus 1, which is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. And then this is equal to 4 minus 3, which is 1. Hmm. X is equal to 3. It's okay. It works. Now, let's take a look at x is equal to 4. Right. So, x is equal to 4. When x is equal to 4, we're going to have 4 minus 2, which is 2. Square root of 2 is square root of 2. And then on the other side, we're going to have 4 minus 4, which is 0. And we know that these two are not correct. So, um, how are we then supposed to show that the solution lies in that interval? I'm thinking that in the setting of the equation, uh, this or equals to is a mistake. It is not supposed to be there. Because if it is not there and we just substitute 3, you know, the two sides will be equal to each other. But then for the mere fact that you are including 2 and 4 and clearly the answers don't make sense, I don't know what is going on here. So those are the two options. Is a typing error or I'm making a very serious mistake? There's something I can't see. Which I doubt is the case. Let me know in the comments. How do you do 1.2.1? I'm interested in. I'm interested in your answer. All right. So that is 1.2.1. What about 1.2.2? Can we actually solve the equation? I think we can. Um, square root of x minus 2 being equals to 4 minus x. Let's go with both sides. We're going to get x minus 2 being equals to 4 squared is 16. And then minus x multiplied by 4 is minus 4x. You multiply the 2. Uh, you multiply that by 2, you get minus 8x plus x squared. Okay, so let's take a look. We're going to have x squared minus 9x plus 18 being equals to, being equals to what? Being equals to 0. All right, so let me just make sure that I'm not making a mistake. Uh, 4 squared is 16 minus 8x, x squared. That's fine. And then x squared this, when it goes to the other side, it becomes minus, so we have minus 8x, and then this becomes positive. So we have plus 18. Okay, it seems like I've solved that. Um, I've solved that. I have not made any mistake. So let's carry on. Um, we need to factorize. Okay, so let's take a look. We have x, x, and this is equal to 0. Two vectors of 18, when we get, we get minus, when we add, we get minus 9. Okay, minus 6 and minus 3. I think those two work. Minus 6 multiplied by minus 3 will give you plus 18, but will add to minus 9. So, right, minus 6, minus 3. So, x is equal to 6 or x is equal to 3. Okay, most of the time, one of the answers turns out to not be correct when you substitute it back in the equation. So, let's see. Let's substitute x is equal to 6. When you substitute x is equal to 6, we're going to have 6 minus 2, which is 4. And then on the other side, we're going to have 4 minus 6, which is minus 2. And then 2 is equal to minus 2. Okay, x is equal to 6 is not a solution to this equation. So this is not fine. Let's substitute x is equal to 3. We're going to have 3 minus 1, square root of 1 is 1. And then, okay, we are good to go. There we go. Um, yeah, so that is 1.2.2. Let's do 1.3 and 1.4 on a separate equation. But let me know in the comments, how did you solve 1.2.1? Which video do you want me to do next? Which equation? Question 2, question 3. Looks interesting. Let me know in the comments.